Recently, I reviewed two flashlights from the company Hoto, the Flashlight Fit and the Flashlight Light. Well, now I have something even more unique from the company Hoto. This is their Camp Light. If you're interested in hearing more about this one, keep watching. So as always, just before we begin, I want to thank the company Hoto for sending me their camp light so that I could share it with you. Now I will go down to the tabletop. I'll go over its key features, its physical specifications, its performance specifications. Of course, we'll do some testing. Just before we take a closer look at the Hoto camp light, if you have not already watched my review of their flashlight fit and flashlight light, I will provide links to them at the end of this video. Uh, unique lights to say the least and certainly worth checking out. But this light, this is something different altogether and I'm actually very excited about this one. It provides features I just have not seen really in any other light of its style. Yeah, okay, well, let's get started and then I'll tell you what it is that I like so much about this. So before we look at the light, let's take a look at what else came with it. So this is the box that the light came in. Rather large box, isn't it? But there's a reason for that. Let's pull this out. So the light did come with the, of course, manual. A little bit more comprehensive than the other manuals that I've seen. This is actually one stapled in the middle like a little booklet, which is kind of cool. All right, this is one of the key features for sure. This is a flexible light shade that is magnetic and will actually act as a shade and reflector at the same time. I'll be certainly be showing you how this operates. And in one of these side pockets, there it is, the USB type C charging cable. Let's put those items aside. It did not come with a carabiner, but I'm going to suggest that you find one. This is just one of those little s beaner style things. I'll tell you why I feel that's important in a moment as well. Let's bring the light back in and we'll go over its physical specifications. <clears throat> so overall length, five and three eighths inches or 128 millimeters, a diameter one and five sixteenths inches or 34 millimeters, Weight, 4.76 ounces or 135 grams. It comes equipped with a 3100 milliamp hour lithium ion rechargeable battery, but it is non-replaceable. You won't be able to access it. So a little bit smaller in length, a little bit tiny bit wider in diameter, but de and lighter in weight as well, but with an even more powerful battery than either of the other two flashlights I reviewed. Let's take a look at its performance specifications. So it has an IPX6 waterproof rating. Not as high as some of the other flashes you can purchase today, but IBX, IPX6 is nothing to uh, condemn. It's still a very good waterproof rating, especially when you consider what this is intended for. It is primarily a camp light. It's an area light that will work well in a tent on a picnic table, but can still be used as a flashlight, as you'll see. So it does have three modes of operation. It has a flashlight mode, and the flashlight mode will run between 12 lumens and uh, 120 lumens at 5000 K in the color range. And that is will run for 10 to 40 hours. And you'll see it has the uh, smooth ramping, that infinity type smooth ramping for each of these levels as well. So the camping mode itself in the, or is more of an area light runs between 18 lumens to 180 lumens at 3500 K. So a little bit uh, warmer light it will run between 8 and 40 hours. And then there's an ambient mode, and the ambient mode has two subcategories. So there is the ambient light, which is runs 5 lumens to 50 lumens at 2700K, so warmer yet, and that'll run between 20 and 50 hours. And then there's one that I can only describe as candle light, and you'll see why when we do it. But it also runs at 5 lumens to 50 lumens for and 2700K, that nice warm yellow light, for 30 hours. So just before we go through the modes of operation, there's just a couple of other features that I want to share with you and make comment on. So primarily this is a camp light. So it's something that can either be stood upright on a table or it can be hung from a ridge line or a hook inside of your tent. 
And here is that would work. There is a stand-up D-ring right here. And by the way, you can see the USB Type-C charging port up on top up here. So it has this stand-up D-ring. And this is why I recommend it having some type of a carabiner, not necessarily an S-beaner, so that you have a way of attaching it to a ridge line. You can probably, you know, easily attach it to a hook in your tent if you have one installed. But if you don't, uh, you're going to look for something. Now, here's my comment. I'm not going to do it because it's just a, a bit annoying. This lays flat and flush inside of that circle. So flat and so flush, I can't get it open with my fingernails. And I, well, I don't really have fingernails to do it with. I have to use some type of a thin object to lift it up. Occasionally, my finger will grab onto the under edge of this. But for the most part, I cannot uh, get this up from that laying flat. Now, maybe other people will find it easier, but I just did not find it easy at all. I say that only because it would be nice, and hopefully the company will consider this, some type of a nail nick, either on the outside so that you can get your fingernail there, or underneath on the inside of the ring so you can get a fingernail under there to lift it up. Not a deal breaker, just a slight annoyance because all I did is just took the edge of a knife and lifted it up and it was no problem at all. Okay, let's get into the operation of this light. So the way it operates, single side button on off switch, holding the button down will wrap between the lowest lumen setting and the highest lumen setting for each of the modes. The modes can be determined by turning the whole bezel. And I'm hoping this will show up so that you can uh, see how this works. I can certainly see it right on the edge here. Yeah, there it is showing up. There's a small little black line. Inside of the basil itself, you will see three symbols, and they represent the three modes, flashlight, camp light, and ambient light. So let's start out. I'm not even sure which one is in right now. There, I think that's it. This is flashlight mode. That's right. All right, so you can see the light out of the lens, so out of the end, so it does have its own independent LED for operating as a flashlight. And to operate it and run it through its lumen setting, press and hold the button. And it's powering down to its lowest and flashes. Hold the button again. It'll power up to its highest and flash. There we go. All right. So and memory for last uh, one use. Now, you probably notice. Let me turn it on and show you that again. When I turned it off, it doesn't just turn right off. It kind of fades out. Kind of different, right? I haven't seen that on other lights either. So that is the flashlight. Um, it's hard to say what kind of a cast it has. It's not a long distance beam, but I found it, you know, perfectly fine for use around the house, certainly in the tent and just around outside of the tent. It seemed to work just fine for a flashlight. I would not use this if it was my primary hiking flashlight, but again, it's a camp light and that's the way to look at this. Now let's move it over to the floodlight mode. Turn it on again, and you'll see a different set of LEDs inside of the basal light up now. Now, that is in the high lumen setting for the flat or flood or camp light. But if I press it, it'll run down and flash. Press it again, it'll run up and flash. Okay, now turn that off again, it fades out. We'll go over to the ambient light, and this is different. I mean, it's just different. I'm then going to attach the light shade so you can see how that adds to this as well. So here we go. This is the ambient light. It's a very yellow light, a nice mood light, if you will. It's, it's not offensive to the eyes. It's just a warm yellow color light that also responds to that uh, smooth ramping. Let me run it down. So, in fact, I think you could probably use this and leave it on at that low setting in your tent. Well, uh, 50 hours, sure, why not? You could use this and leave it on inside of your tent if you wanted to have just enough light to be able to see what you're doing and know where your light is when you need it. So, and run it back up again. And it'll flash. There you go. All right. Now, if I press the button again, it changes from what is called ambient light to what I'm referring to as candlelight. It's different. And the only thing to say is just watch. So it seems to be an irregular pattern of the light running up in intensity, down in intensity, flickering, not like a true candle, but just changing, ever changing in intensities and uh, 
and level. So it runs a little longer sometimes, a little shorter sometimes, and it flash. So it's, it's not functional in the sense, and then of course if I press it again, it turns the light off. It's not functional in the sense that it provides lighting for the sake of light so you can see what you're doing. It's just background light, I guess is the best way to say it. So again, this could sit on a table like this and act as a candle, or you could have it hanging inside your tent if you just want a little bit of mood lighting, I guess is the best way to say it. Now, let me bring in the shade. So it is a shade. It's intended to block light from the sides. It is a light, light gray color. My only comment here is if it would have been nice had it been white, completely white on the inside, or maybe even reflective. I'm not sure if they could have done that, certainly with this. It is just a nice flexible sheet, and you can see it holds together with magnets. To install it, it's going to rest in on this groove here. Uh, it's not hard, it just takes a little bit of hand-eye coordination to get it into position. There we go. All right, so now, it reminds me of the Yuko or UCO candle lanterns, which I have one of, but also has a two-piece metal shade, which is also reflective underneath, so it'll cast more light downwards. But uh, yeah, so this is how it operates and or how it goes on. Now, I'm going to set it for the camp light mode, so I'll show you what it, I have here. And now you can see I have a light that does reflect down to a certain degree, and you can see it does reflect inside of that shade. So it does do some of the work. I just thought it could be a little bit better had it been white rather than light gray. But hanging from the tent, this would illuminate the pretty much the entire inside of your tent, just a nice light. And even better if you have a nice little carabiner like that, that you can hang it from any guideline or... or, or a line across the top of your tent. Having gone over the physical performance specifications as well as the modes of operation for the Hoto camp light, one thing left to do, of course, and let's do some testing. So I figured the best way to demonstrate the Hoto camp light was to show it in use inside of the tent that Gina and I are camping. So the I have the Hoto hanging from the ceiling. Right now it's set on its lowest lumen setting for the floodlight. And I just wanted to give you an idea of just how much light it provides inside of the tent. By the way, you can probably see our campfire reflecting off of the inside of the tent. The campfire is behind me. So from what I'm seeing on the screen, it doesn't, it's actually a little brighter to my naked eye, but I'll step inside and I'll turn the light up through its, its in highest intensity. All right, running it up through its lumens to its highest intensity, and it flashes. So yeah, there's lots of light inside there now, as you can see. Now, I could use this as a flashlight, but honestly, it's not. Its primary use is not a flashlight. It would allow you to go outside and move over around, but it's not going to light up a large area. And of course, that ambient light, as I showed you, uh, is also nice, but that's not the primary use of this light. It's exactly what I'm doing here, hanging it inside of a tent. All right, let's see if we can wrap this video up with a few comments on the Hoto camp light. Overall impression, unique, different, very functional. I like it. I like it a lot. I like that it's so much different than so many other lights that are out there. I like that it has those three modes of operation, the flashlight, the camp light, and the ambient lighting. The ambient lighting is cool. It's not functional in the sense that it provides light that you can function by in your tent or anywhere else, but it's just nice to use in a background. And sometimes that's really all you need. It's just a little bit of light in the background just to feel more comfortable with, especially at that 2700 Kelvin color temperature. It's that nice warm yellow light, not a cold white light like so many of the lights are today. So I, I like all of those features of it. I like the smooth ramping so I can set it to exactly the lumen level that I want from it. And it has memory, so it'll come back to that the next time I turn on. This is a cool little feature. Again, not seen, I don't know of any other flashlight on the market that comes with a shade, reflector type of a shade. My only comment here is that, would I lose it? 
And it's possible I could lose it. It doesn't make this non-functional. You can still use it and likely I could come up with something else to work. I'm wondering if the UCO one will work around this. I think this is probably too narrow for it to function, but easy enough to make something, even if I just made it out of paper, or maybe I found some plastic and I could make something of this diameter and size. It's just a means of how am I going to hook it together. Uh, this has the magnets, of course. Yeah, okay, so are there any downsides to this thing? Well, I did mention my frustration with the D-ring and not having a nail nick for opening it up. Not a deal breaker at all. Um, it doesn't have a long casting flashlight, but considering this is not intended to be primarily a flashlight, more of a camp light, then I don't mind that. It has enough forward cast that I can do what I need to do around a campsite, specifically in a tent or outside around the tent. Yeah, it is, again, another unique design from the company Hoto. So, as always, I'll put all the information I've given you on this light in the video description below, as well as the links to where you can find out more about it. I did mention that it would include links to the other video with the other two lights from Hoto that I tested, the Flashlight Fit and the Flashlight Light, if you're interested in looking at those ones as well. Okay, if you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.